This is the solution to wax M02. Okay, so uh, so uh, the derivative of uh, exponential of 2t, that would be exponential of 2t, and then uh, for the chain rule, we'd have to multiply by the derivative of 2t. The derivative of 8 is uh, 0. Uh, the derivative of, uh, well, that's a constant multiplier, so then that would be plus 4 multiplied by the derivative of log of t is 1 over t. And then, uh, finally, the derivative of pi cubed, this would be 0. And uh, this is the one that, uh, if students messed up something on part A, this is the one that they messed up. Uh, the reason why is that uh, pi is a constant, and uh, therefore pi cubed is a constant. Uh, so the derivative of pi cubed is 0. Now the most common wrong answer was the following, is that, uh, well, the derivative with respect to t of t cubed, now that really is, uh, whoops, that really is 3t squared, uh, because, you know, this symbol t and that symbol t are in agreement. So that uh, that really is right. So that that's correct. But uh, the most common wrong answer was uh, that uh, students wrote the derivative with respect to t of pi cubed was uh, 3 pi squared. Uh, now, there's uh, two ways to interpret uh, how uh, what this mistake means. You know, uh, instructors can't read minds, but uh, here's probably the two best interpretations of this. So one is that a student just, uh, it didn't occur to student that uh, because pi is a constant, pi cubed is uh, also a constant. So the derivative of any constant should be zero. Uh, alternatively, it could be that uh, without, re without regard to knowing that pi cubed is a constant, uh, notice that uh, t and that symbol are different. So these are the same. Uh, so that should be 3t squared, but these are different. So as a result, if you wanted to do this, this could be made correct uh, so that's the most common wrong answer there. Uh, this could be made correct if you went on to use the chain rule and said, uh, now I have to multiply by the derivative of pi. That would be using the chain rule, okay, and then at that point you have to realize that, uh, oh yeah, pi is a constant, so that's going to have to be zero. And that would have been correct. But the most common wrong answer for that one is uh, 3 pi squared. Uh, for this, uh, the point of this question was to see if you could uh, use the product rule uh, and the chain rule in the same exercise and in order. So uh, to do this, uh, you know, the answer is uh, first the, the derivative of the, oops, the derivative of the first factor. multiplied by the second factor, and then plus uh, the first factor multiplied by the derivative of the second factor. Okay, so then this would be 
the derivative with respect to x of x is just uh, 1, and then multiplied by exponential of negative x squared plus x. Now, uh, for this, uh, we need to use the, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot to do that up there. Let's, fix, let's finish this up real quick. So this would be exponential of 2t times 2, and then uh, plus 4 over t. All right, so sorry, back to this now. So now we want to do the derivative of this. So we're computing the derivative of an exponential, so we get uh, the exponential back. You always get the exponential back. And then uh, for the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the argument to the exponential. So by that. So this would be 1 multiplied by exponential of negative x squared, and then plus x multiplied by exponential of negative x squared, and then multiplied by 2x, uh, negative 2x. Uh, good. Uh, the point of this one is that uh, is that uh, you need to uh, perform algebraic simplification first. Uh, otherwise, uh, the <coughs> the question. Uh, Calculating it gets uh, sort of out of hand very quick. Uh, but if instead uh, you notice the following, that uh, we're looking at something that looks like a plus b over c, uh, this can be algebraically simplified to a over c plus b over c, something like that. So as a result, um, we can say that this is a derivative with respect to w, and then the first term would be 4w cubed over w squared and then subtract 5w squared over w squared, uh, and then subtract 1 over w over w squared. So again, we haven't done any calculus yet, just doing algebraic simplifications. So simplifying that, this would be 4w, and then subtract 5 and then uh, 1 over w, and then divided by w squared is, uh, you could write it like this, you could say that's 1 over w multiplied by 1 over w squared. Again, no calculus yet. So derivative with respect to w, uh, 4w is good to go, 5 is good to go, and then uh, this is 1 over w cubed, but for the purposes of calculus, uh, better to write it as w to negative 3. So then the answer is 4, because the derivative of 4w is 4, uh, the derivative of 5 is 0, and then uh, plus 3w uh, uh, to uh, negative 4. <coughs> so bring that bring that exponent down, negative 3 comes down, cancels with the negative, and then uh, negative 4. Okay, very good. And then uh, this one, the whole point of this was just uh, the chain rule. So this would be, uh, you know, well I guess one, one minor point was that, uh, was for you to remember that uh, the cube root of uh, u uh, is also represented as uh, u to one third. So this would be negative four z squared plus 17 to fractional exponent to a third. So the answer would be a third. Negative four z squared plus 17. And then a third uh, minus one is two thirds. So ne negative two thirds. And then multiply by the derivative with respect to z of the inside. So this, this part is for the chain rule. So 
So this would be a third, and then negative 4 z squared. This part at the front is finished, so I, we're just copying it. And then now the derivative of that is uh, <coughs> is uh, negative 8z. And uh, that's the answer.